Hey guys, it's Fanny San here doing this week's War, otherwise known as Wednesday Album Slash Anime Review. For today's album review, I thought that we'd review an independent release that most of you might be unaware of. This week, I popped in Houseworks, the debut album I, that I bought straight from the artist himself, House the Great, otherwise known as House, for short. I had to put off buying it for a very long time because my inner chronic music downloader thought it was flat out retarded to buy music, regardless of its quality or whether or not I wanted to support the musicians. Eventually, I just bought the album because I wanted to give back to House for being a high caliber musician and for giving me so much good music already to listen to. I'll admit, I was also curious as to how the new songs, as well as the songs that I practically burned into my cerebellum, turned out for the album. Let's find out. Now here's my personal backstory. How I came to find House the Great is almost an entire vlog unto itself. You see, back when I was in IT tech, around 2004-2005, my friends and I would often go during our breaks to websites like Fugly.com and KillSomeTime.com and even eBombsWorld.com to watch funny video clips. For those of you who don't know what these sites are, they were basically the YouTube of their day. But instead of people vlogging all the time, they just put up funny clips that were found on TV or that people recorded themselves or what have you. One day, we stumbled upon, keep in mind this is before Stumble Upon was around, <laughs> a clip of this androgynous Asian, I honestly still don't even know to this day if, it, if he or she is a he or a she. But anyway, he or she was playing Super Mario Brothers on an electric guitar complete with sound effects. Needless to say, I was blown away by not only his or her playing, but by the concept of people using rock instruments like guitars to play music that was on video games that was mostly done with keyboards. I then was on a mission to see if anyone else had done something similar. Since YouTube wasn't around at the time, clips of other people playing video game music were scarce and the quality was mixed. After doing some extensive site searching, I came across ocremix.org, also known as Overclocked Remix, or OCR for short, which is basically the jackpot of video game music performances and rearrangements. Although there were no video clips to be had of people playing the music, there was a seem seemingly never-ending amount of MP3s of video game music from just about every game imaginable. People did all kinds of strange and beautiful things to the arrangements. They would add a killer synth drum beat and technify it, they would perform the music as a rock band would, and they would sometimes change the arrangement so much that it would almost sound like an entirely original piece were it not for the bits and pieces of video game music put in there. I felt like what the first kid who tasted sweet and chocolate for the first time must have felt like. It was bliss. I eventually came across an excellent remix of a song from Ninja Gaiden 2 for the NES called Ninja Escape. It was done by another excellent musician named Ashane, who, as it turns out, had an older brother who also did remixes of video game music. His name was House the Great. I love the Shane's other remixes like Red Cap Assault, which is a remix of the battle theme from Final Fantasy Mystic Quest for the Super NES, so it was a no-brainer to check out what his older brother was doing. While both brothers share an excellent melodic feel to their music, House's music seemed slightly more mature and refined than a Shane's. After talking with them online a couple times, I found out about an indie rock band called the Mini Bosses that do strictly music from NES games, as well as a monthly comp competition that a Shane and House participate in that's held, up, held by people on the Mini Bosses forum called The Dwelling of Duels, or DOD for short. From there, I got the chance to listen to a lot of perfectly legal music done by independent artists that strayed far from the norm. Because I was so passionate about the music and the ease of contacting these wonderful musicians, I then started acting like a total attention whore on their message board, which is why most of the members still don't like me even to this day. Keep in mind that when I first joined, it was uh, 2005, but that's another story altogether. Here's the track breakdown. This album was released back in 2006, and people are still talking about it even today. The first track, Sanctuary, is a medley of songs from the Castlevania series. It has a big jazz fusion feel to it, especially in its quick musical changes. The next song, Light in the Fortress, is a remix of a song from Mega Man X for the Super NES. With this keyboard meets guitar meets techno beat style, it is one of my all-time favorite songs. Alien Corpses, which is a remix of a song from the game Duke Nukem 2, reminds me a lot of, the, of a rhythm section in a Joe Satriani song. Up next is a, is a short piece from King's Quest VI called Murder by Flora. Although it's barely over a minute long, I love the nylon guitar work that House did. After that, it's Midnight Cocktails, a song from the game Le Leisure Suit Larry. This is about as jazzy as you can get without breaking out a semi-hollow guitar and plucking a bunch of jazz chords. 
The song's very smooth and an especially good listen if you're writing. Madeira First Movement is a combination of songs from the game Madeira, and another one of my favorites. It feels like a prog rock song without being a 9 minute plus opus, which works out just fine for me. The seventh track, Seized with Fury, comes from the game Final Fantasy VI. It is classic house, complete with backing orchestra and smoking guitar licks. Malik's Cross, a remix of a song from Betrayal at Crondor, is another short but sweet nylon acoustic piece in the same vein as Murdered by Flora. Brinstar Minibasa, a remix of a song from Metroid, is next on the disc. It has more of an old-school 50s, 60s jazz flavor to it compared to Midnight Cocktails, which has a more contemporary jazz sound to it. Track 10 is Walk on Water, a remix of a song from Sonic and Knuckles, and the most anticipated of the CD-exclusive tracks. It's another great jazz fusion song that really reminds me of Al Di Miola and how the song is structured. The next track, Crumbling Statues, is from the game Magic Sword. Next to Walk on Water, Crumbling Statues is the best of the new CD-exclusive material. Once again, I'm getting an Al Di Miola feel from this track in terms of structure, and it also reminds me of Light in the Fortress. After that is one of House's signature tunes, Waltz of the Dolls from Final Fantasy IV. Only House the Great could take a waltz and make it rock. This track is also a fine example of House's overall musical style. Track 13 is track 8. Wait a minute. Did I read that right? Yes, I did. The 13th track is actually called track 8, and it's based on the game Metal Gear 2. It's a slow, industrial beats meets jazz guitar sensibilities kind of track. Up next is Snowflakes on a Rose Garden, a track that House submitted for the DoD competition, but pulled the MP3 from the site because he didn't like the way it sounded. Thankfully, he redid it and released it on this album. It's quite a moving classical piano number. Hurry, the 15th track on the album, has some nice alternative guitar picking that makes me think of what a combination between Alex Skolnick from Testament and the Al Skolnick Trio and Al Di Miola would sound like. The 16th and final track on Houseworks is House the Great's masterpiece, La Hora Es Tarde, from the Castlevania 3 game. It's a combination between prog rock, Latin jazz, classical, and neoclassical music all rolled into one glorious track. If Jason Becker and Al Di Miola did a song together, this would be what it would sound like. If you only listen to one song on this entire album, listen to La Hora Es Tarde. So here are the goodies, the baddies, and the uglies. I was ecstatic when House announced that he was releasing an album, but at the time, I didn't have the money to buy it. I'm glad that I eventually bought it, though, as it's one of my all-time favorite CDs. House the Great even sent me a written personal message in the album jacket when he sent the CD to me. How awesome is that? I'll even show it to you. Here's the cover of the CD. Here's the back of it with all the tracks. You can see that there. Here's the CD itself. Here's the inside jacket. Open it up. What's this? Let you read some of that if you can. It's a little blurry, but it's just basically dedications and credits and stuff. And he sent me this little message right here. It says, Andy San, what's up, man? We don't get we don't see you too much on the board these days. He's talking about the mini boss's message board called the shiz.org. Hope all is well, my friend. Thanks for ordering the CD, House. Seriously, who else but an independent artist would actually personally send a written letter to a fan who bought the CD? Seriously, I keep it with me to this day. It's awesome. Although most of the tracks on Housework are solid, I do have some gripes about this CD. I could go into the fact that House put out way too much of his older and freely available material, but most of it sounds great, so I'm not going to complain about that. What I will complain about is that the production value on the older tracks, and even on some of the new tracks, doesn't seem like a leap forward that's expected from an album release. For example, even though I disliked the redone older songs like The Saltwater Room and Hello, Seattle on Owl City's album Ocean Eyes, I can at least admit that the sound quality was higher, even though the overall song quality was not. I know that House didn't have the budget that Owl City had, but I think that he could have done a better job mixing the songs. With the re-release of so much older material, 10 tracks out of 16 total, I'm disappointed that he didn't put out a remix or a live
live version or even an acoustic version of at least one of his older songs. Also, since the songs were fairly short, exactly half of the songs were over four minutes long, and only three of them were over six minutes long, I'm sure that House could have also included video footage of him playing some of his songs, or behind the, the scenes of the making of Houseworks that would have been viewable uh, via computer, like your CD-ROM, or just plugging it into your DVD player. Here's the verdict of the album. Despite the technical shortcomings and the re-release of a lot of otherwise freely available material, House the Great's Houseworks is a staple in the small but growing collection of rearranged video game music albums available for purchase. And here are six tracks to give a clicky click. Light in the Fortress, Midnight Cocktails, Madeira, First Movement, Walk on Water, Crumbling Statues, Waltz of the Dolls, and La Hora Es Tarde. Definitely recommend buying this album. The link to buy the album is in the sidebar. Get it. It's it's good for you. It's awesome. And also, uh, since it's an independent release, he doesn't have too many uh, CDs left, so you better hurry and get it. <laughs> so, this is the Andy Son, signing off for now. Hoping you guys enjoyed the review of House of the Great's Houseworks. And uh, have a good day. See ya.